Hello, Girl Scouts of the Greater South Texas. I hope you're ready for some more virtual fun. So let's get started with the Girl Scout Promise and the Girl Scout Law. If you don't know the Promise or Law, you can repeat after me, but if you do know it, definitely say it with me. So let's start with our right hand, pinky down, thumb over our pinky, and we'll say the Girl Scout Promise. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout Law. Now let's say the Girl Scout Law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do. And to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Now let's get started. Whether you are a competitive athlete, new to exercise, or simply want to improve the skills you already have, the Cadet, Senior, and Ambassador Legacy Athlete Badges will help you to customize a cross-training fitness program, practice good sportsmanship, and demonstrate your athletic skills by coaching others. Today, we have a very special guest who will be lending her expertise and helping us to complete a few of the steps from those three badges. So let's tune in and see what she has to say. Hi, my name is Sarah Roberts and I'm a certified personal trainer and a cancer exercise specialist. I'm excited today to talk to you about exercise and all the good things that it can bring. Exercise has always been really important for me. Um, back in the seventh grade, I joined the cross country team. I had known that it would give me a lot of physical health benefits if I were running consistently like that, but I didn't anticipate and I quickly realized all the mental health benefits that it can offer. It's one of the ways that I still find joy in helping me manage stress and just give me a nice uh, mind reset when I need it. It makes me feel strong and confident and it reminds me that I can do anything that I set my mind to. I like to hike too and when I go on hikes and I see all these really cool things in nature, I feel so accomplished and proud of myself because my body brought me there. Our bodies are pretty incredible and they do a lot for us so it's important to take care of them the best we can. Running is one of many forms of different types of exercise. There's cardio, there's resistance training, there's stretching, and there's balance. Cardio, like running, is really important for us to do because it makes sure that our hearts stay nice and strong and healthy and that our bodies stay nice and strong and healthy throughout our life. Resistance exercise is really important for us to do because it builds muscle. Muscle is important because it helps maintain strong and healthy bones. It helps make sure that our metabolism is working well and the best that it possibly can. It also prevents us from getting injured when we're doing things like running or balancing or stretching. So it's important to have that combination, but it's also important to, to challenge your balance and to make sure that you're stretching to keep your body nice and healthy. Getting a variety of all of these different types of exercise is super important because it makes sure that we are able to achieve all elements of fitness and it also makes sure that we don't get bored. If you did the same thing every day, you're not going to be likely to stick to it and be able to achieve these great health benefits. So it's important that you switch up your different types of cardio, the different types of strength training that you get. You challenge your balance in different ways and it's important to make sure that you're stretching and taking time to take care of your body. Okay, so we've talked about how running is an example of cardio. Can you think of other ways that you can move your body to achieve cardio? And what about strength training? I know that I mentioned lifting weights, you know, doing a dumbbell curl with a, or bicep curl with a dumbbell. Um, what are some other ways that we could maybe build muscle by moving our bodies? What about balancing and stretching? What are some ways that we can make sure that we're moving our body and balance and stretch? Try to think of the things that you do and what you've done in the last couple of weeks that may fall into each of these categories. And it doesn't have to be something that includes equipment. And I'll show you what I mean in just a little bit. You can get a whole pile of benefits from doing all of these exercises. So it's really important that you are including each of these in your weekly routine. So as you think about what you've done in the last week, don't be so hard on yourself if it's not something that you've, you've thought about. That's why we're having this conversation now. It's really important to mix it up and make sure that you don't get bored and that you're able to do something that you enjoy. 
the best advice that I can give you is to find something that you like to do and stick with that. Change it up if you get bored, but it's important that you enjoy what you're doing. I compare exercise to your friends. If you are hanging out with somebody that you don't care for so much, that they're kind of mean to you, maybe they hurt you, um, you're probably not gonna hang out with them. So think about the same thing for exercise. If you are doing something that hurts you, that's not fun, you're probably not gonna stick with it. So make sure that you're doing something that you enjoy. Now finding something you enjoy will help keep you on track and keep you motivated to go and be active. But goal setting is also another way that it's important to incorporate into your exercise routine to make sure that you are staying active and keeping yourself accountable. Goal setting is kind of tricky, but I have a little trick to help you with it. It's important to set SMART goals. And SMART means specific, measurable, attainable and action-oriented, realistic, and time-oriented. So if you were to say, I want to be stronger, that's a great goal. And I think that's really a great place to start to be motivated. But it's not specific enough and it's definitely not a SMART goal. To make that a SMART goal, you should say, you could say, I want to be able to do 10 push-ups by August 1st. So to start, what I'm going to do is try to do two push-ups every single day. That is specific. It's measurable by the number of push-ups you do. It's action-oriented because you've made a plan for yourself. It is attainable because you have plenty of time to do that. It's also realistic and it's time oriented. You have a deadline that you're working towards. So work on SMART goals and try to think of ways that you can set a SMART goal. It's okay if you have to go back and revisit your goal and, and readjust them to make sure that they um, are appropriate for where you are in life and what you are capable of doing. Don't be so hard on yourself. Focus on only what you can do and don't compare yourself to other people. Now, you may be surprised to learn that walking and running are both forms of cardio. Walking is definitely gonna be a lower intensity and running is definitely gonna be a higher intensity. What I mean by intensity is how hard you're working. You may feel like you're working pretty hard if you're running versus how you may feel when you're walking. They're both great and you should definitely be incorporating both types, meaning low intensity and high intensity into your exercise routine. One of the ways that we can measure intensity is your heart rate. You can measure this by taking your pulse or if you have a device like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or anything similar to that that can take your heart rate, you can measure that. If you're gonna measure it yourself, what you'll do is just put your fingers on your wrist, on your thumb side here, and you're gonna measure the number of times that you feel your pulse in 15 seconds. So you'll count that, you can set a timer, count your pulse, 15 seconds and then you'll multiply that number by four and that's going to be how many times your heart is beating in one minute and i challenge you to be creative with this so maybe see how it may feel to walk up the stairs or walk around your block if you feel comfortable and take your pulse after that and then try to do something that's a little bit more challenging whether it's skipping in place for a little bit doing jumping jacks and measure your heart rate there Get creative and just see the different ways that your body um, your body can move and, and identify what those intensity levels may be for you. It's important not only to incorporate a variety of different types of exercises, but also a variety of the different intensity levels. So you shouldn't always be doing high intensity or low intensity. It's important to make sure that you're getting a variety and remember, just like I said about your friend, if your friend is hurting you and you're not enjoying your time with them, you shouldn't hang out with them. Similar to exercise, so keep that in mind as you're doing these examples that I'm giving you. If it's hurting you and you're not enjoying it, that's okay, don't do it. You can do something else. Don't hang out with it, don't spend time with that exercise. I'm gonna show you a few different types of exercises you can do. You can do this in a circuit or you can do one of these, whatever you choose. These are only examples and know that there are so many more different types of exercises out there than the four that I'm gonna show you. So join me in my living room. I'm gonna show you in just a second here the different types of exercises that you can do in a circuit.
Girl Scouts, it's been fun talking with you and sharing my knowledge about exercise and physical activity. And what I want you to take away from this is just that your bodies are incredible. They can do so much for you and it's important to celebrate all the cool things that it can do. Find something you enjoy and I hope that you learned something today. Thank you again to Sarah Roberts for providing her expertise and helping us to complete a few of the steps from the athletic badges. I encourage you girls to go back to your levels badge and complete the remaining steps so that you can be better prepared as both an athlete and a leader. I can't wait for more virtual fun with you next time. We'll see you soon, sisters.